Mr. President, this really is a new day of hope for tens of millions of Americans who have fallen through the cracks, who worry that they may fall through the cracks of our broken health insurance system. When President Barack Obama signed the Comprehensive Health Insurance Reform Bill this morning, I could not help but think as I sat there, this ranks with the creation of Social Security and Medicare. They've talked about reforming the health insurance for decades, but it hasn't been done. And of course, it's been an arduous process, but it's proven that change is possible even when you have the pitched opposition of entrenched and extraordinarily powerful, and I might say very wealthy, special interests. America rose to meet one of its foremost challenges and renew its promises. Now, America has some of the best health care in the world if you can afford it. Well, millions of families in America and Vermont worry they're just one paycheck away from medical and financial disaster. This is a new day for them. And I'd ask all those members of Congress who fought so hard against this health care and voted against it, are they willing to give up the great health care system that they have as members of Congress, that they can buy as members of Congress, trade places with the millions of Americans who can't buy the great health care system that members of Congress have? I haven't heard a single one of them who voted against giving help to these millions of Americans say they'd give up their own. Whenever I travel in Vermont, I'm often stopped, whether it's in the grocery store or church or on the street or a gas station, listen to personal and wrenching stories like the woman from Wynn Hall, Vermont, who needs to spend $500 a month on prescriptions, but would be uninsured if not for her husband's job. She's working two jobs to make ends meet and afford the health care costs. Or the small business owner who works six and seven days a week, but she still can't afford the blood test her doctor recommended. And if she becomes sick, she'll lose her business and her home. Or the man from central Vermont who told me of his sister-in-law who lost parts of both of her feet because she couldn't afford the simple care that would have saved her feet because she did not have health insurance. When she needed medical attention, she waited, hoping things would get better, knowing she couldn't afford to go to the doctor. But by the time her family was able to step in, she had to be rushed to the emergency room, not for a cure, but for amputations. This is America, Mr. President. And I don't hear a single member of Congress saying they're ready to give up their insurance that they're able to buy through the U.S. Senate or the House representatives in trade places with this woman. I grew up in my family, small business in Montpelier, our printing business. And I know that business owners want to attract and keep good workers. And many want to be able to offer health insurance options as my parents did. But spiraling insurance costs have taken that option away. And some of the most immediate and far-reaching reforms in this new law are the tax credits. They're going to help small businesses continue to offer insurance to their employees. You know, health insurance has prevailed through a grueling gauntlet of obstructionism erected by defenders of the status quo, worse than anything I've seen in my years here in the Senate. And one remaining gauntlet remains in the Senate where partisan opposition has prompted an effort to derail these further improvements to this law. It is no wonder that while Americans vastly support the individual components of these bills, they've been skeptical when asked about the hazy concept of comprehensive reform. Some have argued that doing nothing is a safe option. Well, last month, insurance companies planned a series of premium hikes as large as 39 percent in one state. Last year, the five largest for-profit insurance companies booked $12.2 billion in profit. And they raised the average family premium three times faster than wages. One company alone, WellPoint, is hiking rates by double digits in 11 states, where the profits are up 91 percent. And even with soaring profits, insurers continue to drop sick people from their roles 
spend less on care and because they have an exemption in, uh, 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 from the antitrust laws, they avoid competition. Well, now that this bill is law, annual caps on coverage are eliminated. Insurance companies now barred from dropping people from their plans, even if they had paid their premiums, simply because, gosh, they got sick, the thing they bought health insurance for. And denying children health insurance coverage because of pre-existing conditions is now illegal. Parents can keep their children on their health policies until they're 26 years old. Mr. President, I think of the people who work so hard on this. I see Chairman Bacchus and Chairman Dodd on the floor. We would not be here without the two of them. And I think that we, we must continue and they must be able to make this final, uh, they must be able to finish this final step. The people of Vermont have given me the honor of representing them in the Senate for 35 years. And I've joined in many debates that were contentious, yet ultimately productive. And as we leaf through the pages of history, we can read the many times when Congress has shown its remarkable ability to rise up to reflect the conscience of the nation, this body especially, which should reflect the conscience of our nation. As many here have noted, our dear friend Senator Ted Kennedy would have been remarkably proud of the President and this Congress for passing reform unachievable so, for so many years before. He reminded all of us in a letter written to President Obama what the stakes are in this debate. He wrote, what we face is, above all, a moral issue. The stake are not just the details of policy, but fundamental principles of social justice and the character of our country. Well, when the emotions are calmed, I believe this effort will be, re be viewed as a credit to this good and great nation and its good people. President and the Congress have responded to a pressing national issue. They showed they could rise, <laughs> rise to the challenge before them. And I'm proud to have had the honor that Vermonters have given me to represent and advance their interest in this effort. And I'm glad to say to my fellow Vermonters, now the day comes when you have the opportunity to have kind of insurance that we members of Congress have. I'm sorry that some have voted to deny that to you. This senator votes to give it to you. <laughs>